Your morning news now. President Donald Trump paid just $750 in federal income taxes in both 2016 and 2017. That's according to a new report by the New York Times. The Times reports the president paid no income taxes in 10 of the previous 15 years, largely because he reported losing more money than he made. He is also responsible for $421 million in loans. Most of it is due in the next four years. The president is calling the Times report, quote, fake news. President Trump has named Judge Amy Coney Barrett as the nominee to replace late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Barrett is expected to meet with senators on Capitol Hill tomorrow. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden is imploring the Republican-led Senate to hold off on voting on her nomination until after the election. A new report on President Trump's tax history is likely to be brought up in the very first presidential debate tomorrow in Cleveland. There are six topics that moderator Chris Wallace says he would ask about, including the coronavirus, the economy, the Supreme Court, and election integrity. President Trump told reporters Sunday that Chris Christie and Rudy Giuliani are helping him prepare. Biden has been holding mock debate sessions with former White House General Counsel Bob Bauer. A federal appeals court has temporarily halted a six-day extension for counting absentee ballots in Wisconsin. The decision Sunday by the 7th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals is a momentary victory for Republicans and President Donald Trump. As it stands, ballots will now be due at, by 8 p.m. on Election Day. The League of Women Voters in Winona is hosting a virtual forum to meet, to meet your candidates for the upcoming election. The goal is to provide a series of nonpartisan forums to allow the public to learn more about the candidates and how they stand on the issues. The virtual forums are set to take place over the next three days, starting this evening at 5.30. To send questions to the moderators or for more information, you can visit facebook.com slash League of Women Voters Winona. We'll have that rain gear handy today. We do run a chance for some showers, especially this afternoon. Uh, I'll run Sky Tracker through this morning, mainly just passing clouds. And then this afternoon with the prime heating of the day, watch how there's some spots of green. That's the spotty shower chances or sprinkles, and those should dissipate by about sunset this evening. Minnesota officials have stopped a statewide COVID-19 testing study after multiple reports of health workers being greeted by racial and ethnic slurs. The Department of Health said an incident allegedly involving a gun happened on September 15th in the town of Eitzen. Health workers administering the Casper survey reported being boxed in by cars while walking up to a house. The people who surrounded them did not believe they were actually health care workers and used racial slurs. The mayor of Eitzen denies anyone in the city called CDC teams racial slurs or confronted them with a gun. For the fourth day in a row, the state of Wisconsin confirms more than 2,000 positive coronavirus cases. The Department of Health Services update now shows a positivity rate of 27.6% for the more than 8,000 COVID-19 test results processed in the last day. A single day record of 2,817 cases was reported Saturday, and so far over 1,200 people have died in the state. Eighth grade students at Aquinas Middle School will be learning from home after a teacher tested positive for COVID-19. If students need to pick up books or check out a laptop, they can stop by the school's front doors today. Eighth grade fall athletics are being suspended until October 13th. Seventh grade and high school students will be attending school as normal. The Boys and Girls Club of West Central Wisconsin is preparing to support kids' needs under the new learning environment. The Reedsburg Club recently introduced Club Hub, which provides families with the option to receive supervision, virtual learning support, and activities for their kids during traditional schooling hours. The Toma Club will also consider using the Club Hub model if they're at their site if the school district moves to a virtual or hybrid learning model. A free COVID-19 drive through and walk-up testing site opens again in La Crosse County today. If you are experiencing symptoms or think you may have been exposed to a coronavirus case, testing takes place outside the Health and Human Services building near downtown La Crosse from 10 this morning until 6 in the evening. Starting today, drivers near Nodine should expect some closures and detours. The westbound Interstate 90 ramp and the ramp from Winona County Road 12 to eastbound Interstate 90 will be closed. This will allow crews to do electrical work and regrade the ramps for the new bridge over the interstate. The eastbound I-90 exit ramp, which has been closed since August for construction, will reopen today. Signs for detours will be present along the highway. The All Abilities Canoe Kayak Launch is now available at Veterans Freedom Park in La Crosse. The launch is fully ADA compliant with wheelchair accessible ramps, wide platforms and railings. Grants from the Wisconsin DNR and Mayo Clinic Health System helped pay for the project. 
Well, currently we have a mostly cloudy sky over downtown La Crosse. We had some spotty uh, showers and sprinkles earlier this morning. Those have now moved into central parts of the state. Current temperatures low to mid 50s for most. Some 40s though in Rochester, Preston and Decorah. It will be breezy and cooler today with a chance of showers, especially this afternoon. Highs in the mid 50s to around 60 degrees. Uh, low to mid 60s tomorrow and Wednesday. Small chances for showers through Thursday. Also cooler later in the week with highs only in the 50s. Thursday, Friday and uh, some cool 50s right through the weekend as well. All right, thanks a lot, Bill. Jen returns to the desk tomorrow. Thank you so much for your time this morning. CBS This Morning follows us here. Have a great day.